Frequently asked mining questions. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And today I'm just going to have a quick chat about some of the frequently asked mining questions we get asked about. We posted them up on Facebook and asked if anybody had any more. We've added a few, so I'll go through them. So first one is, do you have to relocate? And the simple answer to that is, these days, yes. You really do have to chase the job down. Now, that can mean relocating from the eastern states to WA. There's lots of stuff over here at the moment. But it can also mean relocating from Victoria to Queensland or from New South Wales to Queensland or even the other way around from Queensland to New South Wales. As there's lots of jobs going in Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, Australia and WA at the moment in hard rock underground mining and exploration. So where do they fly from? So normally they fly from the capital city. So over here in WA, they fly from Perth. In South Australia, they normally fly from Adelaide. In um, Queensland, sometimes they fly from the Gold Coast. Sometimes they fly from Brisbane. New South Wales is a bit different because of the res restrictions on Sydney's airport with their curfew. They actually don't do a lot of flying and fly out most of it's drive in drive out you still go out to the camp but you drive yourself there you do your week or your two weeks and you drive yourself home opposed to being flown in and flown out so what happens on site will you get yourself a room and that's where you stay do you get your own room in hard rock underground yes you get your own room that you get to keep and you get to lock up and leave whatever you want in there so you can take a television up there and make it yourself make it your own um, you just got to be a bit careful about what you put on the walls these days you can't have anything too provocative otherwise um, you'll get yourself into trouble so what do you eat they supply they've got a mess up there the dry mess and um, you get uh, breakfast and dinner and they also put stuff out so you can make yourself crib or lunch or as we like to call it underground crib the the food you know it can be really good on some sites and it can be very average on others so it just depends on the luck of the drawer on that one now what do you have to pay for the only thing you have to pay for is your beers or you know your soft drinks chips um, anything that you'd buy at a pub or at the wet mess which will be your pub on site um, you can um, buy up there there's a lot of things you can buy up there you can buy cigarettes and tobacco and all that sort of wonderful stuff most places stock shampoo and stuff that you um, forget that people forget to bring up with them so you can grab some stuff from there uh, depends on where you are to how expensive it is sometimes it can be pretty expensive and other times if it's run through a social club um, then drinks can be fairly cheap so it just depends on where you are and lastly on this one is uh, what phone or internet coverage is there um, there's really only one way to go and that's Telstra unfortunately that just because they control the majority of the network in the outback situations and while you can go with other providers it's just hit and miss whether they'll be able to hook in to the Telstra um, signal that you're getting on site so I've always found it best just to you know go with Telstra the company or the owner of the mine normally has an internet connection that you can dial into that's been getting progressively better over the years it just depends again on who you're working for and um, how much they've invested into all that sort of stuff i did get asked another question on this post um, Andy's asked a question about um, mobile crushing and screening um, you know how much is this the same thing as mining well yes and no once you blow the rock up underground and you haul it to the surface then they throw it through a crusher to make it up to a reasonable size to put it through the mill so crushing and screening from that perspective before it goes through a mill that can be often done just um, depending on what sort of circuit the mill's using and you know how big they want the stuff to be before it goes into the ball mill now you know that's a skill in itself but as per se it's not actually mining mining's going down and boring a hole in the rock and charging it with explosives firing it and then hauling it up the top so you can process it so from that perspective crushing and screening fits into mining I hope that made sense. The last couple of questions that I got asked is um, about going from night shift to day shift when you're doing two and one. So if you start off on night shift and then do your second week on day shift, you'll have a 24 hour break in the middle and just got asked about how's the best way to reclimatize yourself to being on day shift after a week of nights. 
So you normally finish in the morning and they'll organise a barbecue and the boys or the crew will have a few beers, um, cook themselves a barbecue. I always found 10 or 11 o'clock was a good time in the morning to sort of be heading off to go and have a sleep and then wake myself up for dinner, have something to eat, have a wander around for a little while and then jump back into bed and up the next morning for day shift. One of the big mistakes people make, and you know I've done it myself back in the day, is to keep drinking all the way through till 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock that night. Now, if you've been drinking all day and you've only got given yourself um, 10 hours for it to wear off, you might feel all right the next day when you wake up, but I can tell you here and now you're going to have a problem with the breathalyzer. So just be aware that you know those shift change days are all about resetting your body clock. Um, you can do have a few beers, a few drinks to do that. But yeah, it's all about getting an adequate amount of sleep. And the last one that I got asked about was pays. And this one's pretty specific. If you're starting with a labour hire company, then they normally um, pay weekly. If you go on to a contractor like Burncut or Barminko, then they tend to pay um, fortnightly. And then if you go from one of the big owner operators like Newmont or Northern Star or one of those big companies, then they tend to pay monthly. So you get paid for the uh, first two weeks of the month that you've worked and you get paid for the last two weeks before you work it. And then they just work out the bonuses on top of that. So I hope that makes sense and answers a few of your frequently asked questions. Just to finish off with, I just want to have a look at the jobs on Seek. So if you type underground in, you can go down and have a look. There's a lot about it at the moment. There's entry level going in New South Wales. So that's Barminko advertising for entry level. They've got a big mine that they're going to have to fill up. Um, Kalgoorlie, more entry level. There's jobs all over the place. Nippers in Mount Isa, so that's a Queensland job. So there's lots of stuff around at the moment. And again, down the bottom here is entry level with Northern Star with the owner operator. And you can go through it. There's lots of jobs all the way through, um, all around the country. And what do the employers want you to know? They just want you to know how their mine works. And you can use the intro to underground mining, the sponsors training to do all that. It's four online courses, cost you $450, teaches you everything that they want you to know. And in the back of the Australian Mining Seminar, it teaches you how to redo your resume to make it mining friendly. And it also teaches you um, the interview prep questions and goes into all of that stuff. So if you want to have a crack at getting into Hard Rock Underground, that's what I suggest you have a look at doing. Like I said, it doesn't cost too much and it um, brings you up to speed with everything that the employer wants you to know. It allows you to answer the mining questions in the interview, which makes all the difference when you're trying to get a job. So I hope people have found that information interesting and if you've got any more questions you want answered, just send them through and I will do a video about them. And I'll keep on forgetting to ask people to subscribe and like the channel and uh, like the video as well. If you could do that, that would be wonderful. Thanks.